and welcome to tutorial 4, recording and editing a vocal part in GarageBand on an iMac and iPad. I'm Lyndall Murphy and I'll be taking you through a few steps on how to set up a vocal recording. So I usually set up not through the voice setting, I go to an empty project and click choose and I will select the uh, record using a microphone or line input. So we'll click on that and click create. So what I've got here is an audio track, um, just one that I'm going to record a vocal part on. So we're going to record a quick demonstration of a vocal part just using Mary Had a Little Lamb. Mary had a little lamb. So as you can see on the screen, the level of the vocal recording is quite low. So we might need to actually change the level on the track or the master volume. So we'll make these changes. So I'm turning up the volume on the actual track and also the master volume track. So let's try to record this again. Mary had a little lamb. So as you can see, the level of this track is a lot louder. The next thing we'll do is just trim the end of the vocal recording, just so the mouse click isn't heard at the end. And then we'll zoom back out. So we can move this vocal track around if we need to, but we'll just leave it at the beginning here. And the next thing that we'll look at is actually changing the quality of the sound. So if we go into the voice section over here in our library, we can choose from different types of effects. So let's have a listen to the bright vocal. Mary had a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Classic. Mary had a little lamb. Compress. Mary had a little lamb. The edge lamb. vocal. Mary had a little lamb. Buzz vocal. Mary had a little lamb. And so on. So there's many different effects you can actually add to your vocal after you've recorded the original sound that you have. So there's always room for you to edit the track if you need. Other ways that we can actually add in effects is using the tab I've just pressed. So let's have a quick listen. Mary had a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. So as you previously saw, I was editing the output of the compression and limiting effects of the vocal. Another effect that I can do is actually equalize or EQ the vocal at different frequencies. So I can either select any of these frequencies, so 2K usually makes it sound a little bit brighter. So I'll lift it up and we can have a listen. So that's 2K. Mary had a little lamb. 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 So these additional effects of EQ, compression and limiting can be added to the setting that you've selected from your library or setting that you've used. So I've added these extra effects to the bright vocal. The next thing we'll look at is automating our vocal part. So I'm going to automate the volume of this particular track. So we're going to create a nice little fade out just by clicking in some dots. And I'm just going to drag this down at the end so it has a really good fade out. So let's listen to this. Mary had a little lamb. So you can create a really nice fade out at the endings of phrases of any particular track that you've recorded. It doesn't have to be just vocals. Um, with our automation track, we can actually select any of these particular functions as well. So if we want to change the frequency and automate it so it changes between, say, high frequencies to low, we can add in extra dots onto the line and then move them around if necessary to change between different frequencies. Mary had a 
So as you can see, there's quite a lot of different effects that you can choose from. So I'm just scrolling through. So we've got all these different effects that you can automate and change um, and create the effects that you want at particular times in your song. The next thing that we'll try and automate that is one of my favorites is reverb. So it adds a little bit more presence to your dry vocal track. Mary had a little... So as you can see, it sounds like there's a lot more presence added to the vocal. Another favorite is panning. So we're going to add some dots to the line and move them from one speaker to the next. So it's going to end on the left speaker and also start on the left speaker. So it's going to move from the left to right speaker quite rapidly. It's a little bit hard to hear in this recording, but if you're panning a vocal track, it's easier to hear the panning if you have headphones in. So make sure you're wearing the headphones the correct way. So left headphone in your left ear, right headphone in your right ear. And before we finish, we'll save our project. And we'll just make sure we save it in the correct folder. And I'll just save it as vocal recording. And click save. I always find recording vocals on the iPad a lot more fun than doing it on the iMac, mainly because there's lots of different effects you can instantly have that are available when you record your voice. So as I'm speaking, you'll see that the audio recorder level is picking up my voice um, as we're speaking. So let's record a vocal part. Mary had a little lamb. And it's already on a dry setting, so we can instantly change it to all these Mary different settings. Had a little lamb. So as you can hear, it's quite a dry sound. So we're going to change it to a small room or small room reverb. So it's adding more Mary presence to the vocal. Had a little lamb. We'll change it to a large room. Mary had a little lamb. Makes it sound a little bit more spacey. Uh, Mary dreamy. Mary had a little lamb. Telephone. Mary had a little lamb. And back to dry, which is what we originally recorded. Mary had a little lamb. And then the bullhorn effect. Mary so we can add a little bit more distortion if we need. Chipmunk. Robot. And last but not least, the monster effect. Now, if we want to go back to the track and have a look at our recording, we can move this recording around if we need to, but we'll leave it just at the beginning. And I'm going to copy the track and then just paste it after bar two. So I've just trimmed the end of that first loop that we've got and then we'll click paste. What I'll do now is if I pull the tab on the left, I can then edit the volume to high or low if I need to. And if I want to split a loop in half, I just double tap the loop I then put my finger where I need to split the loop and then I can move that section that I've just split to any part of the track. If I go to my settings, I can change the tempo, key signature, but if I go to the next tab, I can change the, the panning volume. So if you have your headphones on, you may be able to hear it.
I can change the echo level. Or I can change the reverb level as well. So I'll turn the echo level down. So there's quite a difference in sound compared to the reverb and echo effects that you can add to your vocal recording. As you can see, the editing of the vocal part within GarageBand on the iPad is a lot simpler compared to editing your vocal loop within GarageBand on the iMac. This concludes tutorial 4. In tutorial 5 we'll be looking at editing a green or blue coloured loop within GarageBand on the iMac and iPad. So make sure you stay tuned for tutorial 5.